So we have a rare treat today. Um, some of you may have noticed that at these meetings we often have people who are professors who are more specialized in science and technology. Today we have uh, something which many of you might find a little more entertaining. Um, I have a rather uh, lengthy bio to read you because uh, Etienne, Professor Charles, is so accomplished. So uh, if you don't mind, I'm just going to read through this. Um, I think you'll find it incredibly impressive. Etienne Charles is an award-winning trumpeter, recording artist, composer, arranger, and associate professor of jazz studies in the College of Music. Jazz Times called Charles a daring improviser who delivers with heart-wrenching lyricism. According to Downbeat magazine, Charles delivers his ebullient improvisations with the elegance of a world-class ballet dancer. In 2015, he was the only musician worldwide to be appointed a John Simon Guggenheim Fellow in music and joined only 10 other musicians to ever receive the award. In 2015, Guggenheim Fellows were selected from a field of over 3,000 applicants representing 51 disciplines and 63 different academic institutions. In making this appointment, the Guggenheim Foundation stated, perhaps more than any other musician of his generation of Eastern Caribbean origin, Etienne brings a careful study of myriad rhythms from the French, Spanish, English, and Dutch-speaking Caribbean to his work. Crucially, as a soloist, he fully understands the New Orleans trumpet tradition, which is readily discernible in his trademark instrumental swagger, and what famed Crescent City pianist Jelly Roll Morton so succinctly captured in the now immortal phrase, the Spanish tinge. Etienne's work has been supported by grants from the Chamber Music America and the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation. In 2016, Charles was a featured panelist and performer at the White House Caribbean Heritage Month briefing, and he received the Jazz at Lincoln Center Millennial Swing Award. He was also the recipient of the 2016 Ruben D o. D. Askew Alumni Award from Florida State University. In 2012, he was elected, he was inducted into the congressional record. It is important for MSU to have individuals of international renown in all fields. Strength in the arts and humanities is a core value of every great university. Professor Charles, through music and his scholarship, brings new insight and understanding of humankind and the African-American experience and history, as well as the African diaspora. Jazz, which has its grassroots in the African-American cultural heritage, has been continuously evolving to include new traditions, including the Afro-Cuban movement of the 40s and today's artists embracing their ethnic heritage. Charles is foremost among these artists and scholars, and uh, I welcome him today. taking all these different moments in history and kind of tie them together into music. It's really great. With Creole Soul, there was a lot of research, but it was specifically from the field recording standpoint. With this one, we went to each of the regions. We went and we met with the people, not only interviewed, but we played music with them, we listened to, you know. For the time frame, I would say that, yeah, this was the most in-depth we've gone research-wise because of the traveling with the specific purpose of learning about these regions to then come and write music. Etienne is scholarly in his knowledge of not just music, but of the history of the Caribbean and the New World in general and colonialism. He's basically dealing with the indigenous people of various different regions, how they travel from different regions and how the different regions are connected, even though they don't seem connected, how Costa Rica and Africa and California are all connected. So it's very interesting to learn about where some of the rhythms come from and how some of them are the same rhythms used in various different cultures. And this record is really a statement on all of the hard work he spent studying the history of the New World. It's a very fascinating and interesting project. It's just a journey from one place all through the Caribbean and coming on up and ending in Cali, so it's great. So, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here. Thanks to Dr. Sue for the introduction. This is really um, a different type of audience for us, but we're really glad um, that you would have us here. Um, so, I, I, I was invited by Dr. Sue and Doug Gage to present my research, and um, it's kind of difficult to do in eight minutes, but I'm going to try my best. Basically, the project that um that we're talking about today was my album, which was called The San Jose Suite, which came out in 2016. Um, 
it was a research project that I did through composition and music, and it was specifically to to research the effects of colonialism um, in the new world and um, in the at the end of colonialism. And specifically, I chose three different countries, all with a city called San Jose, which meant that they were all formerly either occupied or colonized by the Spanish. So I chose Costa Rica, California in the United States, and Trinidad, which is where I'm originally from. The piece, for, so once so I had the idea, okay, so this is, these are the three places, how do I connect them? Because um, any research project is about connecting them, finding lines that connect these places. And so I went and did research on the African immigrants and the descendants of African immigrants in each place, as well as the descendants of the indigenous peoples who still live there. Um, and with that, the results were really fascinating. Um, specifically with respect to Costa Rica, you have, um, you have in respect to the African descendants, the Africans that went to Costa Rica, they came from the Caribbean after slavery had abolished. And as a result of that, Costa Rica is considered a Caribbean country with respect to the Africans. Um, with respect to the indigenous people, the, the Baruca people of Costa Rica, they fought the Spanish for 34 years and they have this amazing ritual that I was there for that I was when I was live I lived with them for a week and um there's an amazing ritual called the Juego de los Diablitos um and what that is is their artistic reenaction of their battle with the Spanish where they all cover their faces with these beautifully painted and carved wooden masks and um they make a costumed bull and they take turns button heads with this bull for 3 days straight the 3 days replicate the um, 34 years of fighting the Spanish. Um, with respect to California, um, I took a little bit of a, a twist. So the indigenous people I dealt with, the Ohlone people, the Moek Ohlone, which is one of the largest indigenous tribes in California. They um, built all of the missions that you see in California. So if you've been to Mission San Jose, Mission San Francisco, etc., like the Mission District, they built all of those things. But somehow, they are not actually documented as having ever existed in the United States of America as a people. Um, and so I met with them, stayed with them. The, the chairperson, her name was Rosemary Canberra. She was very kind. I had like almost like this. There was a two and a half hour PowerPoint presentation I had to sit through to, to learn about them. Um, and then with respect to the African descendants in California, I took a little bit of a twist. Instead of dealing with people who came as migrant workers, I used the, the black students, the African-American students that came to the San Francisco Bay Area and San Jose in the 1960s when, when they were beginning to desegregate state universities across the country. Um, and my main research subject for that was a gentleman by the name of Dr. Harry Edwards, who's a legendary sociologist and he, you know, he was a mentor to many great Olympians at San Jose State University. Um, if you've ever seen the Black Power Salute of the 1968 Olympics in Mexico City, where John Carlos and Tommy Smith put their fists in the air during the national anthem, um, ceremony for their gold and bronze medals, respectively. Um, you would you would know that 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 was the culmination of a series of protests that began in the early 1960s at San Jose State University with people like Harry Edwards, Lee Evans, etc. So it, what it showed me was that student activity um, can create can have a global effect. Um, the the if I could say I, there was a thesis statement involved or something that ended up tying it all in my conclusion was basically this. Um, communities will continue to be formed no matter what happens with respect to colonialism. Um, and when communities are formed and they are strong, they can naturally resist adversity and bring changes to things that seem to be adverse. And my the other um, observation that came from this was that um, culture is the main identity of a society. The art is the main identity of a society. When you like where I'm from, Toronto, Bigger, nobody thinks about oil. People think about calypso, steel pan, the food. Um, when you think about the United States, you don't think about the product. You don't think about Silicon Valley. You think about rock and roll. You think about jazz. You think about blues. Um, and as a result of that, it reminded me of the importance of teaching because the only way that a culture can survive through generations is through the art of passing it on which is why I'm lucky enough to be here as a professor at Michigan State University. And um, with that, I'm going to stop talking. And we're going to play. I have these great musicians. They're all alums of MSU. This is Seth Abasol on alto saxophone. This is Dave Rosen on bass. And this is Olin Clark 
on guitar and we're gonna play one of the songs for you from the album it's called Cowita, which is a place in costa rica which is where the caribbean farmers settled so costa rica decided in 1872 that they were going to build a railroad across the country um and as a result they sent for caribbean workers from panama who had just finished digging the panama canal um and so as a result i got to meet with the calypso king of costa rica his name is walter ferguson he's 96 years old um, he has the thickest Jamaican accent I've ever heard in my life, and he's never been to Jamaica. Um, so that I, wrote, I wrote this song about him and the Calypso band on it. It's called the Cowway Band, and his wife. This one is entitled Calvita. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> And so now, thank you very much for that. And now I'm just gonna show one other short video um, because people were asking about what my Guggenheim project is about. Um, that last project was funded by Chamber Music America and the Doris Duke Foundation. And this next one is my Guggenheim project, which will be released next year. We did the world premiere in January. Um, I went home for, I took a semester off from teaching, bought my time out and went home to Trinidad to do research about all of the sounds that make carnival happen. 
Um, and then from it, I constructed this large form work. It's a large suite. It's three hours long. And um, it took the life out of me. Um, and we recorded it. And um, we just have this little teaser video so you can see all of the different things that we dealt with with respect to the Carnival Project. Here it is. I think that just gives you a sense that uh, we often do gifts granted contract reports uh, and uh, embedded in that are the, found the, 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 the grants from Guggenheim and, and Duke and other things that permit the scholarship, the exploration, the connecting of the dots of all of this um, in ways that uh, do reflect genuine research and scholarship, but, but the output of that is are these both visuals and extraordinary ways of reflecting our soul and our understanding of the world in music. And that becomes the connection of us to the world in ways that theoretically can further understanding with the way in which uh, we think about it. So it's inventions, your met connection, it's research projects and basic <coughs> research that would make us understand the universe. It's a lot of things that are all important, but they're the same fundamentals that we do, whether you're in music or art or in a big science building. And so thank you, Steve, for bringing that. And, and thank you, my friend, for being a part of this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I, I would, I, I yeah. would just, uh, if I could just say thank you for this desk. Uh, a number of us are going to be taking a long trip uh, yes. <laughs> a little bit, and it's going to give a nice opportunity to listen to it. And, and just to Dr. Shu, I think there's, there's a number of us here at the, uh, at the table that would uh, say amen to what you put in the, the reading here, strengthen the arts and humani humanities is a core value of every great university. And as much emphasis as we put on STEM, and, and we should, um, this is an important thing never to lose sight of. So Dr. Charles, thank you for- Thank you, my friend. Yep. Thank you, guys. Thank you.